so once we determine the design wind pressure for each uh, side of our building then we uh, ASC 7-16 prescribes the following four load cases to be used I mean how these, these loadings should be applied to, uh, to, to your structure so for example we calculate the force in x direction of the building and y direction of the building so following four cases should be followed uh, while applying this loading to our structure for main wind force resisting systems uh, and for all heights of buildings the wind load of uh, which have been determined under the provision of this chapter 27 shall be designed for the wind load cases which are defined in these two figures so the main wind force resisting system uh, will be applied to these four cases and will be designed for these four cases case one is that you apply the forces in windward direction of the building uh, denoted as PWX and the leeward direction of the building PLX in X direction only and then Y direction only with no force in X direction so separate X direction separate Y direction so for Y direction this will be the direction of wind for X direction this will be the direction of wind so this will this side will become the windward side for y direction and this side will become the leeward side for y direction same is the case for x direction this is the windward side and then this is the leeward side so case one means separate x forces separate y forces case two means that you apply 75% of the forces in windward side and 75% of the forces in leeward side in the same direction but at the same time you apply a torsional moment which is equal to 0.75 times of PWX plus PWL uh, P, PWX plus PLX times the eccentricity multiplied by the dimension of the building in perpendicular direction so when we are applying uh, the forces in x direction let's say this is my wind direction in that case i will be uh, having this side this dimension of the building let's call it as b sub x so some eccentricity which is which is generally 15 percent uh, of the dimension of the building in that perpendicular direction so 0.15 is the eccentricity multiplied by bx right so 0.15 times bx is the total eccentricity 15 percent of the direction of uh, of the eccentricity in the direction in the direction perpendicular to the building so this is the total force and this becomes the moment arm so this will constitute the torsional moment so you apply that torsional moment along with the uh, forces but those are not full forces they are 75 percent of the forces so third case is the simultaneous application of some forces in the direction leeward side and windward side and at the same time the torsional moment and that eccentricity can be positive or negative also right so for example uh, 0.15 of the bx uh, let's say this is the center of mass so the forces can the torsional moment can be applied using this direction eccentricity like 0.15 bx and on the opposite side eccentricity can also be considered let's say this is minus 0.5 and then this is 0. Point plus 0.15 bx so just like the equivalent static seismic forces we assume accidental torsion and we assume an eccentricity which is there generally 5% of the dimension of the building in perpendicular direction here we use mt torsional moment 
which is having an eccentricity equal to 15% of the dimension of building in perpendicular direction. So if we are uh, uh, applying forces in x direction, the perpendicular direction is this one and have the dimension bx. So 0.15 of the bx in positive side and the negative side, we should apply the torsion. Obviously, uh, this is uh, symbol is this one in counterclockwise when we are having uh, eccentricity in negative direction. But if, when we have an eccentricity in positive direction, it will become clockwise. So depending upon the uh, sign of eccentricity, this case again split into two cases, one with positive EX and then one with negative EX. Similar is the case for Y direction that you apply 75% of the loading in windward and leeward side. At the same time, you apply a torsional moment, which is having an eccentricity equal to 15% uh, of the dimension of building in perpendicular direction. So for Y direction, this BY will become the perpendicular direction dimension. So you take 15% of that as the eccentricity in Y direction. And again, that can be in on one side of the center of mass or the other side of the center of mass, which means it can be positive or negative. So for Y again, it will be split into two cases, two further cases, one with positive EY, one with negative EY. And then case four is the most comprehensive case in which we apply loading on all four sides. For example, a zero point uh, this one 0 0.563 on windward side of X, same on the leeward side of X. Similarly, windward side of Y and leeward side of Y. So all four sides we apply force and at the same time we apply the torsional moment also uh, with and without, uh, uh, with positive sign eccentricity and negative sign eccentricity. So, Again, this, uh, this MT will be this one plus this one and uh, this will be again plus minus plus minus, right? So for one particular direction, all four cases actually split into 12 cases because this will be uh, case, case one will be, okay, one case, case three also is actually, uh, okay, I skip this case three. Case three is the one in which we apply force on all four sides, but we do not apply the torsional moment, right? So this is case three. And then finally we have case four where we have all three sides, all four sides applied force as well as the torsional moment. So when uh, in one particular direction, I was saying that if we say, if we look at the directions of eccentricity, they actually split into 12 cases. And I'll explain that uh, when I go to ETABS, how I make 12 cases for one particular direction of wind. So we can actually count from here because the eccentricity in X can have positive and negative. Again, here EY can also be positive and negative. So this will be split into four cases. And then also again here, also we have two cases and then some case here and here we will see in the software that it will be actually making different sub cases within one load case and covering case one, case two, case three and case four for each direction of wind. So these four cases should keep in mind when we go to software. So this is the explanation of that four cases. Uh, case one is the full design wind pressure acting on the projected area perpendicular to each principal axis of the structure considered separately along each principal axis. X you apply separate, Y you apply separate. Then you have case two where uh, three quarter of the design wind pressure acting on the projected, which means 75% uh, to each principal axis in conjunction with a torsional moment. And then case three is that it is same as case one. Uh, but considered to act simultaneously at 75% of the specified value. So both X and Y forces, but not full forces, 75% of the full forces. And case four is same as case two, but you apply 
both directions and 75% of the forces you apply. Now before we go to software demonstration, I want to quickly highlight here that the performance based design philosophy which is primarily for seismic developed for seismic uh, loading is now being extended to wind loading also and the pre standard for the performance based wind design is already there i would uh, encourage you to please check that guideline it is available from asc and it serves as the starting document uh, to introduce the performance based wind design it prescribes the performance levels which should be used for performance based wind design and the analysis procedures so it formulates a uh, an initial framework uh, to perform the performance based wind design for uh, for high rise buildings and in the context of other structures also so uh, this is developed by the structural engineering institute of the ASCE so this is the first edition and uh, it presents the recommended alternative to the prescriptive procedure which we have seen already in ASCE 7 or IBC so performance based design is alternative to the prescriptive cookbook type code based procedure so if it is properly implemented the pre standard results in buildings that are capable of achieving the wind performance objective specified by ac7 and in many cases it is its performance is superior compared to what is set by ac7 so it also helps in resolving conflicts because uh, uh, whenever there is a cookbook type prescriptive procedure there there are always uh, uh, you know conflicts related to interpretation of performance objective or intentions of building code all those uh, issues will be resolved if we go for the performance based approach and it uh, includes the guidelines about non linear dynamic analysis for wind design currently ac7 and ibc doesn't Uh, consider the use of uh, non linear analysis for wind it is primarily based on the linear elastic analysis the limited inelasticity in the main wind force resisting system elements this is a new concept our current or conventional wind design philosophy is based on the idea that main wind force resisting system should remain elastic under the design level wind pressure but here in the performance based design a limited in elasticity may be allowed in the main wind force resisting system it also prescribe the system based performance criteria and the enhanced design criteria for the building and well so very useful document please check that one so this is one thing which we should consider that the conventional prescriptive procedure which we have just gone through uh, has a very attractive alternative also in the form of performance based wind design so now let me go to eat abs and show you an example building and explore some of the features uh, of asc 7-16 automation for the determination of wind pressure so that uh, those four cases i want to highlight here before i actually go that see uh, per the uh, software actually when we automate asc 7-16 procedure in etabs it uh, create all sets or all four cases which are mentioned in that same figure 27.3-8 so let me go back and show you this figure this is that figure 27.3-8 it prescribes four different cases uh, for the application of uh, wind loading Uh, once we calculate it for both directions so it has have the capability to automatically develop uh, all four cases actually when we consider the direction of eccentricities two directions e1 and e2 or ex and ey and then the sign of those eccentricities positive and negative when we consider them uh, those four cases actually um, convert into 12 cases for example case 1 is set 1 means that the angle of wind is zero which means x direction and uh, then we have uh, no eccentricity in x no eccentricity in y 
which means that the forces are purely applied in x direction with no torsional moment similarly for 90 degree which means uh, y direction again the case one will have uh, zero eccentricities in uh, both e1 and e2 direction or x and y direction because case one doesn't have any torsional moment so case one actually um, becomes two two further cases one in x direction one in y direction case 2 uh, which is actually the application of uh, loading as well as the application of torsional moment simultaneously it converts into four sub cases one is uh, two cases are zero degree which means the forces are applied in x direction and the eccentricity is also in the x direction but one is positive one is negative and the other two cases are when the loading is applied in y direction and the eccentricity in y direction is one is positive one is negative so case 2 is actually con it actually converts into four sub cases when we consider both directions and when we consider the eccentricity sign of eccentricity right similarly case 3 will convert into further two cases uh, it case 3 is what when we apply loading on all four sides and no torsional moment so again case 3 for 0 degree and for 90 degree eccentricities for all case 3 will be 0 0 so it converts into uh, case uh, two further cases and finally case 4 also converts into uh, into four uh, sub cases Uh, depending upon the eccentricity two are in uh, x direction which means angle equal to 0 and two are in y direction which mean angle equal to 90 degree for angle equal to 0 degree one is when both of the eccentricities are pos positive and then second is when both of the eccentricities are negative similarly for 90 degree again positive eccentricities in both direction negative eccentricities in both direction so case 4 is based on the simultaneous application of both torsional moments and both x and y forces also so case 4 is the most comprehensive case so in total all 12 cases the program is able to develop once you determine the wind load pattern uh, which is automatic uh, application for ac7 procedure so let me now go to eat apps and uh, show you directly these options and there is one more consideration about the rigid diaphragm and semi rigid diaphragms i'll directly show that in in e tabs so let me open that and then we can uh, discuss that further